Hi everyone, this is Fabi here and in today's video we'll be talking about watchdog timers, an often overlooked subject in school or when learning embedded systems individually. We'll talk about what a watchdog timer is, how we can use it in our applications and how we can use it to our benefit during the debugging process. If you're new to the channel, this video is part of an educational series I'm doing called Embedded Systems Explained and the aim of this series is to teach you the most important concepts of embedded systems through examples so that you know where these are used in the real world. So of course, if you'd like to know more about embedded systems, I recommend you guys also watch the other videos in the playlist, which are going to be linked in the description down below. Okay, so what is a watchdog timer and how does it differ from a simple timer you would find in a microcontroller? As far as what it does, a watchdog timer is very similar to a normal timer, but it's even more basic because it doesn't have things such as the capture and compare module. If you guys don't know anything about timers, right now would be probably the best time to check out the video which is going to be linked in the card up there because it teaches you all about timers. So the job of a watchdog timer is to count up to a certain limit, so just like a basic timer, and then when it overflows, it starts back from zero, but this is where the actual magic happens. At this point, when the timer overflows, it has to reset the system. You see, if the watchdog timer is allowed to count up to this upper limit, it probably means that there's something wrong going on. It probably means that the microcontroller is stuck in a loop somewhere, there's a condition that fails to appear, or something similar. At this point, if there was no watchdog timer, the system would just be stuck indefinitely. This is obviously not what we want because it could even lead to dangerous situations in some cases. As good as the watchdog timer is though in these situations, we obviously don't want the microcontroller to just reset itself over and over again simply because of this watchdog timer. So it's important to know how to actually program it and how to clear it periodically so that we don't run into this problem. This is obviously not what we'd want because it could even lead to some dangerous situations in some cases. This is why we have to periodically clear the watchdog timer through software. So, for example, if we know that a long task will follow, such as reading information from a slow memory, we could clear the watchdog timer beforehand so we make sure that the watchdog timer is not going to overflow during this process, which would lead to a microcontroller reset. Although I haven't seen this other sort of watchdog timers being used as much, I do want you guys to know that there's also watchdog timers which will reset the system if they're being cleared too often or too rare. This means that you have a window where you can actually clear the watchdog timer and if the watchdog timer is being cleared too often, it will reset the system. If it's being cleared too rare, it will reset the system as well. This is of course a more fail-proof system, but I haven't personally used it and I don't think it's being used apart from mission critical applications. Just to give you guys an idea, an example, if you're using the MSP430 G2 launchpad, which comes with the G2553 microcontroller with the A clock or auxiliary clock, which is the 32.768 kHz clock, which is basically used for the real-time clock most of the time, you can achieve a watchdog timer overflow limit as low as 1.95 milliseconds or as high as one second. If you were to use the system main clock or SM clock, which has a much higher clock frequency, you would be able to get much shorter times for a watchdog timer overflow simply because of that higher clock frequency. You can also pick a different microcontroller from the MSP430 family, which would allow you to further divide the clock source for your watchdog timer so that you're going to end up with longer periods for your overflow. You could, for example, have your microcontroller overflow after more than a few hours. The natural question that follows is how long should you set your watchdog timer? Obviously, there's no universal answer, but there's a few things you should keep in mind while doing this. If you know how long it takes to execute your main loop, so the worst case scenario in which all of the tasks need to be accomplished during the same loop, then you can set your timer to the next available period above that. There are however cases where you don't know exactly how long your main loop will take to execute, so what should you do in these cases? An approach is to think of how long you can get away with an unresponsive system because that's what happens when your system is blocked before the watchdog timer resets it. Let's say you're working on a system that is responsible with the acceleration in your car. In this case, the upper limit for the overflow 
would be really low because you have to have a good response time and if your system is unresponsive for a few seconds and your car continues to accelerate at the same rate after you got your foot off the pedal, that will mean that you will get yourself into an accident. In this case, let's say that 75 to 100 milliseconds would probably be an acceptable upper limit. If you're working on a system that controls the AC in your car though, you might be able to get away with an upper limit of a few seconds as nothing catastrophic will happen if your AC continues to blow cold air in your car after you turned your AC off for just a short period of time. In the end, it all depends on what process you're controlling, how vital it is, and how long it can go without a reset, without losing control. Okay, enough with the explanations, I now want to tell you how you can use the watchdog timer during the development process to easily figure out bugs. Something that you might have already seen for yourself while looking for code examples online is that most of the times one of the first instructions in the main function is going to be to disable the watchdog timer. This is what I would actually recommend you guys do as well during the early stages of development when still writing code or when debugging it because it allows you to see where your code hangs in case it does hang. If the watchdog timer was working, the system would just reset itself as soon as the watchdog timer hit the limit and thus you wouldn't be able to figure out where your code was actually stuck. If the watchdog timer was working, the system would just reset itself when the watchdog timer would hit the limit and basically you wouldn't be able to figure out where it actually stopped. Just to be clear, this approach is useful when using a debugger so that you can actually set breakpoints, stop your code execution, or run step by step. If you're only loading your code through a bootloader onto your microcontroller and don't have access to a debugger, this is not the right approach for you. This is because you don't get the benefit of not using a watchdog timer, which is that you can actually stop your code execution when you figure out that something is going wrong and your system is not acting properly. If you don't have access to a debugger, I have a different suggestion for you. Connect an LED or use the one already available if you're using a development platform and flash it whenever the watchdog timer resets the system. There is a way to find out if the last reset was caused by the watchdog timer or something else, so you can use this to flash the LED only when the cause of the last reset was the watchdog timer. Anyway, whichever approach you're choosing during your development process, so stopping the watchdog timer or keeping it running, it's important to think about clearing the watchdog timer from the beginning. If you know that a lengthy operation will follow, it's recommended to clear the watchdog timer before starting that process or even during the process if you know that only clearing it beforehand is not going to suffice. Just as a tip, if you want to work with your watchdog timer stopped in the beginning, you can write placeholders which you will then easily be able to replace at the end of the development process with the actual instructions which are going to clear the timer. This placeholder could simply be an instruction to stop the watchdog timer which is going to have no effect because if your watchdog timer is already stopped, stopping it again is not going to do a thing. Something critical is to thoroughly test out your system after enabling the watchdog timer so that you know for sure that during normal operation your system will not reset itself because of the overflow limit of the watchdog timer. Also, keep in mind that we can use the C directive no init to make sure that some of our global variables retain their state after a watchdog timer reset. This would be useful if we need some global variables to retain their previous state after a watchdog timer reset, so if we have a finite state machine, we could for example store the previous and the current state of our state machine. Because this series is centered around the MSP430 family, an easy way to experiment with the watchdog timer would just be to pick up the G2 launchpad. This is because the upper part of the MSP430 launchpads is just a spy-by-wire debugger, meaning that you can set breakpoints, you can stop the code execution, and you can even run step by step. Of course, with this you can stop the watchdog timer during the development process and stop the code execution when you feel that something is going wrong and your system is unresponsive. So basically, you could use the approach I gave as an example earlier to figure out where your bugs are. I hope you guys found this video useful. Today we talked about the watchdog timer, I told you how long a period you should set for it, I gave you some examples of how you can use it to help yourself during the development process and figure out where your bugs are, and I also gave you some tips 
that are generally available for the watchdog timer. If this did help you out, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. There's going to be links in the description to the other videos in this series, and I'm also going to put a link to Amazon from where you can buy the MSP430 G2 Launchpad. Our next video in the Embedded Systems Explained series is going to be about low power modes, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Anyways, I'll catch up with you in the next video. Stay tuned.